I purchased my first multifamily home uh, in Brooklyn. It was a triplex 2013. And the moment I went from paying expensive rent in Brooklyn to being paid expensive rent in Brooklyn, <laughs> game was over. And so, um, you know, as I, I started trying to go deeper into the game, buying another property in Brooklyn was challenging because I used FHA for that first property, mm -hmm. but the next one will require 25% down. And when you have properties that are a million dollars, 25% down is going to be a quarter million. So um, I decided to scale my portfolio by investing um, outside of Brooklyn. And that's how I found the New Orleans market. And uh, from there, I just doubled down and continued to scale my portfolio, eventually moving down to New Orleans and things of that nature. So yeah, I, I was wondering, because like a lot of people will start in real estate, they don't have the funding. So FHA was the route you did for your first triplex? Correct, so three and a half percent down. Um, at that time, the property was like 700,000, so uh, it wasn't major money. Uh, I did have to save, I did have to discipline myself in order to save that, but um, I made that payment, and then from there, I haven't had a housing expense since May of 2013. How many, how, how many houses do you own now? I have 40 units, uh, okay. 16 buildings 40 units but that's just my personal portfolio so 40 doors right yeah 40 doors yeah i put a post up i think uh, like 100 doors 100 a thousand shares, well, shares. that's uh, our new club yeah a thousand shares 100 doors that's yeah. something that so you own halfway there yeah halfway there yeah. and then you add in my portion of the other funds i'm at probably around 80 when you add in those as well we just closed on a uh 36 unit in scotlandville and in, in baton rouge so um yeah so continuing to scale up congratulations appreciate that um all right so let's get into some questions um so the biggest thing for that stops people from buying real estate is money yeah you know well we'll talk about mindset also but money is definitely a big thing and financing but there are different programs especially you know we're talking about multifamily homes so yeah we want to talk about a few um one that we have not covered yet which is naca yeah um uh, can you talk about naca a little bit man naca is amazing um <laughs> naca is amazing but uh it's two sides of the coin um you'll hear people say naca is amazing those who have closed and then you'll hear other people say naca is not amazing yeah. right so um naca is really really powerful because it's zero percent down <laughs> no closing costs, no points or fees, et cetera, and extremely low interest rates. And uh, the key to winning at NACA is making sure that your counselor is solid. If your counselor is not solid, then it's gonna be a difficult journey for you. And then it's also your persistence. You have to stay on that person. You actually have to lead your counselor to get to the finish line. So if you're just gonna sit back and think that some program is literally gonna give you a home for nothing and you don't actually put in any effort, uh, it's gonna be a hard road for you. So I've had many people close uh, through my program. See, NACA does the financing, but they don't teach you how to find the deal or how to finalize the deal. Financing is actually the easiest part of the real estate game when you know about programs like NACA or FHA. So NACA uh, actually is not a program for poor people. So that's actually what keeps half the people out is because mm -hmm. they have a perception that it's for people who have low income and it's not. What's powerful about it and why people with low income are able to go through the program is because there's no credit score consideration. And that's huge so for no, a lot of no people. No closing costs. No points or no, fees. No points or fees. No and down no payment. Credit. And no credit. So here's how they verify you. So basically, they take whatever you've been paying in rent plus whatever you're able to prove that you can save over a three month period. So if you're paying $1,200 a month in rent on time consistently, yeah. right? And you're able to show them that you're able to save an additional $300 a month on top of that, then they'll approve you for a mortgage of $1,500. Okay, sir. So that's how they verify your ability uh, to afford the real estate. And so. NACA has two tiers of people. They have uh, priority and non-priority. So priority is anyone who um, is making 80% uh, or less of the area's AMI. So AMI is the area's median income. Mm -hmm. So those people are able to get interest rates as low as 2%. 2%. That's basically free money when you account for inflation being 6%, right? So, uh, and then pri uh, non-priority members who have higher incomes um, start at 3%. But then what NACA actually tells you to do is that since you're no longer paying a down payment, why don't you buy down these points, right? And so a point is a percentage of your mortgage. So if you have a mortgage of $300,000, uh, you could pay $3,000, 1% of that, and actually buy down your interest rate. And they have tiers where their interest rates, when you pay $3,000 in advance, the bank is taking that $3,000 in advance, then your interest rate is going down by uh, probably like 0.125, right? Mm -hmm. So you're a quarter, not an eighth of a point every time you contribute 3,000. So rather than putting that towards a down payment because there is none, you're actually buying down points. So you'll see people in NACA have interest rates that are less than 1%. And so uh, when you 
look at that over a 30 year period, a decrease in interest rate by 1% on a $300,000 mortgage, that's going to save you $60,000 over the life of that loan. Is there a limit that you can put into, like to the point where you're putting 3,000, putting 3,000 to the point where there's absolutely 0. 0.25. 0. 0.25 is the lowest you can go? I think it's 0. 0.25, a quarter of a percent wow. is the lowest you can go with NACA as a uh, priority. So how, how, who qualifies for this? Is anybody eligible to qualify for NACA loans? Anybody. Wow. Anybody. No it, income restriction. It's a, it's a government program, right? Um, no, it's actually a nonprofit. Nonprofit. It's a nonprofit that organized uh, uh, against the banks uh, initially um, when uh, all the predatory lending happened, and um, and somehow they organized against the banks, and then got the banks to offer this amazing financing for people to kind of rectify the guilt that they had accumulated through all the predatory lending that they had done. Mm. And but I know some so some of the downside is like people saying like it takes a long time and it's like tedious process, right? Yeah. So um the best way to approach NACA is actually to do your savings and actually have all your documentation in advance. So if I've been able to prove that I've been saving this particular amount in advance of actually applying for the program and my appointment, then I hit the ground running. Mm. But if I start without any financial discipline in advance and then have to go through the process of demonstrating that I can save this amount of money for this particular mortgage. That's going to take me an additional amount of time in order to qualify or get pre-approved by them. So it's just coming uh, to the table with your financial house in order first, and that accelerates the process for folks. How many t how many times can you actually use a NACA loan? Like if I do it and I pay off a home in let's say ten years. Am I eligible to do it again, or can I have them running simultaneously? How's it work? No, NACA, uh, NACA expects you to live in the home for the life of the loan, but it is a minimum of five-year living requirement. So FHA is only a one-year living requirement. Mm -hmm. NACA is a five-year, but they actually desire you to live in that home for the life of the loan. So NACA is not a play where you can run several times. FHA, there are some hidden ways, some secret ways <laughs> to use FHA twice. We've heard, we've heard. <laughs> yeah, to use FHA twice, but NACA uh, likely not. And so if you want to scale your portfolio beyond NACA after you use NACA, you're actually going to have to refinance once you're out of this amazing interest rate, right, to go conventional to free you up to be able to go use one of the other loan programs okay. or go conventional and scale your portfolio up. So You can um, refinance after five years? Um, yeah, okay. after five years. Gotcha. They actually hold a, a second lien position on you for that five years mm -hmm. to make sure that you stay in the property and you're not house hacking through them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, five years. But you're in order to refinance, you're going to need your home to have be at 80 percent loan to value. Now you put zero percent down. So you either have to force that appreciation or you have to have bought so right that it has appreciated to that extent over that period of time, over that five year period. Yeah, and that is a great place. N A C A. If anybody, that's yeah. how that's how it's uh, spelled. And um, I think they have like seminars and stuff like that. Or like yeah, all the time. Yeah, so you can actually like just Google in your area. And like you said, that you have a counselor. Like if you you get assigned to somebody who's working with you. Yeah. And they kind of help you through the process and getting your documentation and everything in order. And you know, it's definitely beneficial for. for I've known some people that definitely have been able to purchase home through the NACA. Yeah, program. definitely. So uh, Gloria, she uh, um, purchased a triplex in Brooklyn. Uh, no, in Philadelphia recently, and um, all she had to come out of pocket to acquire a triplex in uh, Philadelphia was title fees. Mm. Title fees are a pair of Jordans. She got a triplex in Philadelphia for a pair of Jordans, or a round trip flight from New York to Los Angeles. Like anybody can do that, mm -hmm. but you have to know that it's there and you have to be persistent and you have to be financially disciplined to be able to get qualified through them. My graduates from my school being Forbes, backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>